Let's make it on the seventh fret. Okay, so there are two arpeggio notes or two chord notes that are really, really close to that root. Do you notice? There's, there's one that's just right beneath it on the A string. Bum, da, da, Today we're talking about double stops. If you don't know what double stops are, you're in for a treat today. Hey, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. Double Stop Drill is the name of the lesson today. It's one of those things that after playing for decades, I understand about the mandolinette, but I wish that I would have understood it back then. And so maybe you're where I was back then and you need to understand the mandolinette, mandolinette from this perspective. So we're gonna talk all about double stops, but really it's about unlocking your mandolinette even further. We're going to learn uh, about major chords and about how to find every major chord double stop on the neck and do it fast. And I'm going to introduce a drill that's going to help teach you how to do that. So there's a bit of a challenge built into this one that I think you'll really enjoy. Let's dive in. I've got a graphic that you want to download. It's in the PDF below. Just hold on because I'll show it to you here. Um, this graphic is really helpful because what it's going to do is if you can, it's like a compass rose is the way I imagine it. Have you ever seen a compass rose? It's got, you know, where you are right in the middle. <laughs> and then in every direction, you go a different direction. You know, usually compass roses, when they point up, it's north and then north east and northwest and south. Well, in the same way, I see my mandolin neck like that. Whenever I think about a root of a, of a key, a root of a chord, for instance, this seventh fret, that's an A note. I know that in every direction that I go, either on the same string, going up and down, or if I jump a string in either direction and go up or down, there are places that I can find chord notes. And I think it's really, really helpful for you to be able to find those. Remember, when we play them separately, they're called arpeggios. When we play two of them together, they're called double stops. When we play all three of them together, it's called a major triad. Okay, so it's important to know those. One reason is we know where we're at no matter what chords being played. So if somebody throws an E chord at you and you've got to hang around and noodle for a bit or solo, you can find you an E note and then know where all your safe landing places are. But also so many of our licks are built around the major triads. So when we start to see the mandolin neck like this, it really opens it up and it doesn't matter what key we play in. For instance, this note or that lick. That's simply the, an arpeggio that's descending. Or you've heard the lick a lot that goes up. Okay, so these arpeggios are used a lot in licks. And if you know where this one, three, and five are, and it's not a question of where those are, then it's very easy for us to know where the two is, and the four, and the six, and the seven. So it's like these one, three, and fives, what we're learning today, it's gonna to provide this framework that you can see the mandolin neck through, and then it will provide a way for you to see all the other notes that you need to grab as well. Okay, I don't want this graphic to be confusing for you. I want you to think of it kind of like a compass rose. And if you think about a map, like you could take a compass rose and you can move it all over a map and it still shows north, south, east and west. You just have a, a different point of origin. The same is true for this graphic. We can move the root note all around the mandolin and the intervals are still the same. Why? Because the mandolin strings are tuned the same interval from one another. The guitar's not like that. Banjo's not like that. All of these mandolin strings are tuned the same distance apart. So they're tuned in fifths. Okay? So that means that if we learn a relationship between two strings, how to do something from one string to the next, we can carry that to the next string and it will work too. Okay, let's pull up the graphic and I'm just gonna answer a few basic questions for you. There are no fret numbers. The numbers you see there are not fret numbers and that's because we can move this graphic around wherever we want. But you do see a root and uh, you can think about that as the one, right? So the root, that's the root of the chord. And whenever the root is right there, then the threes and the fives can be found in relation to that root where you see there on the graphic, okay? And the three and the five, of course, is the third and the fifth tone of the major scale. It's the other two notes that make up arpeggios or make up the major chord triads. So I know that I have the main root right there in the center on the D string, but we could move that 
and everything else would just move with it. It's like if you move that root up or down or you change strings, all the threes and fives would move with it the same distance. Does that help make sense? But for right now, just to make it easier, let's make that root on the D string. Let's make it on the seventh fret. Okay, so there are two arpeggio notes or two chord notes that are really, really close to that root. Do you notice? There's, there's one that's just right beneath it on the A string. So you could get it by barring. And which note is that? It's the fifth. That's why it says five. So if we just bar that, we get a root and a five. Okay. And then if you drop down a string, down to the G string, and you go back a fret, that's the third tone of the major scale, or the third tone of the triumph. Well, that's cool. All right. Then you can kind of zoom out a little bit, and you can see the relationship between these various numbers. One thing that's cool about a mandolin is it's really easy to play octaves. So if I've got a C sharp right there, I can stretch out a few frets and get another C sharp above it. And you begin to see those relationships in this graphic, and we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. But here's what I want us to do. Here's, here's what I consider uh, you needing to do to, to learn this and to, to pass this part, is to be able to leave your root and scoot in any direction, root and scoot, either on the same string or jump up a string and be able to go to the closest triad, closest chord note from there, okay? So if we were gonna stay on the same string, look at the graphic, we could jump down five frets and get the fifth tone down there. Or we could scoot up one, two, three, four frets and get the third tone of the scale up there. So we could play an arpeggio on one string. If we jump down a string, down the G string, we already pointed this one out. It's really easy to get to. That's the third tone. That should match this note. It does. Or we could go up and scoot toward the mandolin body a couple of frets and get the fifth tone right there. I want you to notice how root, if we stay on the same string and go root, five, root, five, it's the same thing as going root five, root five. Or if we go root three, root three, we could also go root three, root three, and these are an octave apart. Cool. Now what if we go up a string? Well, we already talked about we can find the fifth if we just barred. Or we could find a third by dropping down three frets. Or we could even find an octave if we wanted to. There's an octave. Okay, so what I want you to be able to do, even if you have to sound it out, you can kind of hear it, is be able to start there and be able to jump to these scale notes. Okay, what scale notes or what chord notes do I have on the G string? Those are my two options. And then if I jump up, so there's really just six of them that I want you to know, okay? Again, if this is our root, there's two. There's two more. There's two more, okay? Now, before we move on, I want you to understand that this works no matter where you start on the mandolin. That's, that's what's cool about the graphic and what's cool about the mandolin theory. So let's change our root note. Let's change our root note to... Um, Let's change it to a D note right here. Fifth fret of the A string, okay? Without even thinking about it, we know that we can find our notes on the same string. It would actually be an open note. Okay, I know where I can grab them on the string beneath it. And I now know where I can grab it on the first string. I can bar, remember, or there. Okay. Okay. So obviously if we were starting with a root on the first string or a root on the fourth string, we wouldn't be able to access the strings that we've run out of. 
but we can still continue uh, with the pattern toward the strings that we still have. All right, so before you move on, I want to give you a little challenge. You can use a graphic if you want, but you can jump anywhere on the mandolin neck and using the pattern, you can find the notes, the chord notes around it. So for instance, if we went here and we started on the seventh fret, I know that I can bar and I know I can do two frets away. I know that I can do this and this. I know I can do this. Cool. You try it and then let's move on. Let's make it on the seventh fret. Okay. So there are two arpeggio notes or two chord notes that are really, really close to that root. Do you know?